ladies and gentlemen, for another episode of FSB Plays Pokemon Red. After our intense battle with Brock, which wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, we're now on our way to Mount Moon. Now, like I said, I don't know this game like the back of my hand, so we're going to just crack on and get straight into it. Now, there's a lot of trainers here. So these people are going to give me lots of level. I know it's a bug guy, which is fine. Because I do have a spear up front, if I'm correct, who needs the levels. Yep. Now, Bulbasaur has Vine Whip, which is fine. I'm not worried about training him up just yet. Because as he's my highest level, it's not a problem. But he'll gain levels in the Mount Moon. Gets all the rocks. He'll be our ace in the hole against Misty when we get there. But at the moment, I just want to get levels and get some things going. And who knows? New beginnings. May get some new team members. And people may start evolving. Mm. Now, nah, just going to get some new members. Easy picky for Spiro. Ah, easy pickings for Weedle. Good old Spiro. It's nice to have super effective moves when you need them. Oh, it survived. Oh, yeah, it's level 10. I'm only level 9. See? Of course, I'm not going to change. I've got the best Pokemon here. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, I need the levels bad. Now, if I remember correctly from my maths, like I said, I've been wrong. Don't know why. Been a while, that's probably. Now, there's nothing really that's going to help me against Misty. Maybe an Oddish. Now, I'd love to catch an Abra, even though we can't get Alakazam. We can get Kadabla. Now, I understand it's Glass Cannon. But when he hits, he hits hard. And Psychics and Gen 1 are broken. So I need to get my hands on that. Now, the one Pokemon I'd love to get my hands on, which I don't know if I can in this game. I'll have to double check. Be a Pokemon that can use Ice moves and Psychic moves. So more than likely, a slowpoke would be nice. Okay. Now, this one has quick attack, I know. Yep, that's super strong. Okay. He's going to use that. As much as I'd love to change over. Need around get in there. Need that happen. See guys and girls. If you play the game long enough. You know exactly what's going to happen. Uh, goodbye you rat. Now that's obviously gone down. Spiro's got points. Nidoran's got points. What's coming out next? An Ekins. Oh, not seen Ekins before. We will change it. We will get Latata, who's our next weakest. Now Ratata may do the damage. He's got very good speed and very good 
attack. And that was a crit, ladies and gentlemen. Not good. Lear Fad, excellent. I've got we can get Ekins in this game. I'll catch one. Oh, here comes one. The broken moves wrap. Gen 1 broken. Two to five turns locked in. Now, if I remember correctly, he is a bug Pokemon. If he's not, we're in trouble. Yep. Four, that's fine. Spiro could do that. Now, being one of a high doesn't guarantee we're going to clean shot it. See, it was if that was a critical hit, that would have worked. Oh, might as well have been clean shot. Oh, now I get a crit when it doesn't matter. That's my life, ladies and gentlemen. It always happens when it doesn't matter. Prayed to God literally a few weeks ago and I said, Please, God, please let me win the lottery. I played Germans and normal lottery. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, I won. Now you're thinking, well, if you won, why are you doing this? Well, it's what I won, that's the funny bit. I won £3.70 and a free lucky dip. Yeah, I know, ladies and gentlemen. Because God's got an ironic sense of humour, a bit like myself. Goodbye, Kakuna. Mm -hmm. And a bit of water, guys. It's so hot. Spiro, gone. Gone, Spiro, get another level. Bad to use. Got to be. Nope, gonna keep him in. See, two levels high and it's still not one shot. I don't like our chances. I believe that was a four or five move. Or hit points. So if that was a crit, that would have put us in serious danger. Now what's he got? Metapod. Lovely. Take it out nice and easy. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. We're on the way to Mount Moon. Nice and easy pick. That wouldn't be a one shot, but it might as well be. Cause... Lovely. Another one down, another one burst dust. So, anyone here watch wrestling? Because wrestling is, seems to be getting interesting. I'm all for what's going on at the moment. Okay, so I know he's probably a buggy. I'm going to take her out, just to be on the safe side. No, he looks at me like I was going the other way. Yeah, never thought I'd see it. Honestly, I never thought I'd see it. The day Vince McMahon... Retires, steps down. He's no longer in charge of WWE. The landscape has now changed. Now, what Triple H is doing so far, I think is amazing. It feels fresh. The product hasn't felt like this in years. Now, obviously, going back to the TV 14, really, well, the best thing they can do is the combination of the Attitude Era and the Ruthless Aggression Era. Now, even though the PG Era, people didn't like, they had good moments, believe it or not. The Shield, PG, era. You know, 2009, the, the feud between Triple H and Randy Orton was amazing. 
you know, obviously with a TV product, you can have stories like that, storylines like that. But I really do hope they bring a bit, a bit more blood. I really hope they get rid of all the gimmicky stuff like Hell in the Cell is a gimmick. Like, I don't mind having a, a match here and there to settle a feud, a feud. But as a general rule of thumb, it doesn't have to have its own pay per view. Money in the Bank, I get, fine, have its own pay per view, that's fine, that's, you can keep that one. I think they need to bring back Survivor Series how it used to be, with teams, against teams. That's fine, you're still alive for Tata. What we got next? Another Pidgey. I will be changing, ladies and gentlemen, to my Pidgey. Pidgey for Pidgey. So yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm glad he's bringing back all these old stars. I didn't like, don't get me wrong, NXT 2.0 wasn't bad. It's not great. But yeah, I'm super, super excited for what Triple H has to bring. If the product, if it's anything like NXT was, before Vince got involved, it'd be a good product. Now, I know for a fact, that if Adam Cole wasn't signed to AEW, he'd be going back to WWE. I think a lot of the guys would. If they were not, was not signed by AEW, they'd be back in WWE right now. And we'd have amazing, amazing content. Like, there's some stars that, don't get me wrong, I've got nothing against them personally. But they just don't fit the narrative on WWE. Yeah, some of them need to go. Do you know what I mean? Some of the spots they're in aren't the spots they should be in. People need to be used a bit more better. Like, for example, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Gunter or Gunter. However you want to pronounce it. Now, hey, I'll be honest, ladies and gentlemen. If you watch that match, I only watched the highlights, but that seemed like a really good match. Triple H loves actual wrestling. And in fact, you're allowed to say wrestling again. It's amazing. You know, like a lot of people said, long time storybooking. It's just, mm, can't wait. Honestly, I can't wait. I think this time next year, AEW are going to have a real hard time. Like, I know they take the mick out of WWE for obviously, you know, oh, NXT didn't do that well. Yeah, NXT didn't do that well. I admit that. But then, to be fair, the roster was butchered. They didn't have that many big stars left. We now have a roster of great stars, young up and comers. Triple H will do everything right in the fact that Raw and SmackDown are a bigger stage with bigger stars. It's going to be a better product, better viewing experience. And if rumours are true that Raw might go back to two hours, hell, Raw might be even be the best show on the best wrestling show going. Obviously, SmackDown is the best one they've got before, before see, NXT's. NXT got butchered. NXT was the show. No ifs, no doubt. That I used to watch that religiously. And oh my god, I will tell you now, I am excited to see what Triple H does. It is just gonna be phenomenal. No more this silly crap. No more nothing. I don't mind it if it's being funny, but just the silliness, it just got ridiculous in the end. And and I'm glad Triple H, and I know people not notice this, but the surprise rolled up finishes and just 50-50 booking is no longer there. It's great. That's what we should have in wrestling. We don't want 50-50 booking. What we want is wins and losses. AEW have got some great concepts, they've got it right. And they've got some great, great homegrown talent. I'm looking forward to see what they do with MJF. Because I think when he comes back, he'll be the hottest star. The hottest star in AEW. The acclaimed. Love them. Great team. They need to work on them more. I don't know. Six months from now, make them the AEW Tag Team Champions. Even if it's for a little while, it'll be great. Tony Khan is having his Vince moments, but he does do some trips moments. And it's amazing to see that. So, 
So we can only hope. But yeah, it's looking good, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's episode will be an hour special. So don't panic. If you think, oh no, it's gone longer than necessary. Oh, I was lucky there. Thought you would have took me out. But nope. Right, that's how I've done it. Lovely. So yeah, let's see what our Pokemon are looking like. Right, I still needs levering up. Now, I know he evolves at 20, Spurver at 20, you evolve at 16, you evolve at 16, 18. You evolve around 16, I believe. So we may get some evolutions here, guys and girls. But because of I don't want to waste potions, because there's no market for a while, I'm going to quickly run back <coughs> to the Pokemon Center. Heal up right up and get cracking. So yeah, wrestling is looking fantastic. I grew up during the 90s. I started watching WCW originally. It was great. And Goldberg started running over everybody. And I'm a big fan of Bill Goldberg. I think he's amazing. I've always liked him. No matter how bad I booked him, I always liked him. And then I saw WWE for the first time. Back when it used to be known as the WWF. The World Wrestling Federation. But, yeah. It was amazing. The Rock was always... I was always a Rock fan more than an Austin fan. I am an Austin fan, just to let everyone know. But I'm a major Rock fan. And as much as he does Hollywood films now, and some of them are really good, I enjoy them. I was always a Rocky fan. There was not a day where I would not be excited to see the most electrifying man in all of entertainment. He was Chef Kiss, my hero growing up. Now, that was in the whole action. I was like watching it around 99, I believe. Right, Rock had just become a face again. Well, he started his first face run. In my opinion, the two... The year 2000, arguably the best wrestling I see that year. Now, some of the booking decisions were a bit iffy. But apart from that, the whole year I thought was great. I thought starting literally from January the 4th, or let's be honest, it started when The Rock and the whole of the locker room came out to call out DX. From that moment on, until WrestleMania 17, wrestling was never as big as it was. I think that was the best year of wrestling in just over a year. I think WrestleMania 17 is, my opinion, arguably, still up there in my probably top three WrestleManias in history. Easily. Now, not all of WrestleMania will have a spot in my heart. Because I didn't grow up before watching WrestleMania before that. Other WrestleManias will be lower on the list. But I have watched other matches from other WrestleManias. Now, WrestleMania 26 was a good, it was an okay mania. But as far as I was concerned, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, number two, mwah. Even though people argue the first was better than the second, probably was. In the terms of an actual match, it was a better wrestling match. But as a story and the meaning behind it, oh, Shawn Michaels, for literally three years on the trot, in my opinion, had arguably, under, well, not arguably, undisputed the best match at that year's WrestleMania. From his retirement match with Rick for retiring Rick Flair at WrestleMania 24, which 
Oh, I watched that 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 match. I watched that pay per view. That match. Oh, the story. It was just so great. Not only that, but oh, ladies and gentlemen, after that, it was just oh. WrestleMania twenty five. Him and the Undertaker stole the show. WrestleMania twenty six. Him and Undertaker stole the show. And I, I'll be honest, I like Shawn Michaels. He I could watch, not, obviously, when you talk about Shawn Michaels, you have to talk pre-retirement and post-retirement. I always preferred post-retirement Shawn. I never watched pre-Shawn. Didn't know anything about him. When he came back, I was like, okay, cool. I started watching his matches. When he came back, and I was just like, oh, my God, this is the best performer I've seen. He, uh, I couldn't name that many bad matches he's been in. But his matches were simply amazing. Triple H has got some great matches. I could literally name off the top of my head some of the best matches ever. Now, all the Rock Austin matches from all three WrestleManias, I find that the first one is the weakest. I know people say it's probably their best, but I think that's their weakest. But they did go strength to strength. Now, I love WrestleMania 19's match. It was just as much as I love the fact that Austin did put the rock over. And I'll be honest, it was thoroughly deserved. WrestleMania 17. Argue, probably the best match they ever had. It was the most entertaining or well, the most entertaining one. It was literally ball to the walls of everything. It was great. The finish was a bit pants with Vince but you know two baby faces someone's got to win might as well have done that would have been better after winning the title Austin stunned McMahon anyway what are you using Metapod let's see who we got against you I believe Pidgey needs some work because <clears throat> you're not going to involve for a little while yet <clears throat> but yeah it's going to be exciting. I just I stopped watching for a little while, rewatched it. I love Kane. He was one of my favourites. I loved American Badass, and a lot of people didn't. But I did. I thought it was great. Because again, before pre ninety nine, or really I didn't really know anything about it. I think the first one I watched was around July, August. It was a six pack challenge at Unforgiven 99. And that made me get into it. And obviously, watching back a few videos from, I can't remember why I watched it. I, might, I could be wrong, it might be on YouTube, but The Rock versus Mr. Ass Billy Gunn. The promo, the infamous Billy talking to God. Oh, that, say what you want, that promo was legendary. And I missed that edgy of the rock, the edginess that the rock had back then. And he kept it all the way to the. He's a fantastic. I can't dispute it. When he came back in 2011, it was great. But I just felt like even 2012, you had glimpses of it, but it just again, it still felt a bit like I missed the old rock. You know, I'm not saying it wasn't bad, but you know. I would want to be trash talk, not by Dwayne The Rock Johnson, not by Dwayne Johnson. I want the jabroni beating, pie eating, trailblazing, eyebrow raising, the people's champion, the most electrifying man in all of sports and entertainment, The Rock. I would love to be verbally assassinated by The Rock. And I don't mean that in a creepy, oh my God, he's got, he's going to, no, nothing like that. I mean, you're going to get roasted by someone you're going to want the best. And The Rock was the best. No ifs, no doubts, no buts. He would roast anyone. There's not one person on that roster I can sit there and go, eh, I will take a roasting from. Now, Stone Cold, an arse whipping, yes, indeedy. Now, she's got a Jigglypuff. I don't like the Jigglypuff. 
So we're not going to battle. I know we should, but I don't really care at the moment. Now we can get some nice Pokemon here and we'll see how we go, ladies and gentlemen. So about that, ladies and gentlemen, just gonna have a quick drink. Now I could get a magic cart, but I'm not gonna do it in this run because training that is going to be a nightmare. Now I've got Bulbasaur, so I don't need a magic cart. Even though really I need a water Pokemon, because I need to beat that Charmander at Nugget Bridge. But yep, I don't care about you, mate. Go get out of my way. See what we're catching here, ladies and gentlemen. Pidgey. Yay. We really want a Pidgey. Not really, but I can do with the levels. Gone. So yeah, wrestling. If any of you want to comment, have a chat about it, let me know. Leave comments in the comment page. Honestly, like, comment, and subscribe to all everything. Let me know what you'd like to see and what you don't, and I'll make the best content I can possible. But yeah, we are getting there bit by bit, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I thought this episode would take longer, but it doesn't matter. Might just leave it a half an hour episode seven day out tonight, guys, because we're going through it pretty quickly. And more than likely, we get to Mount Moon, and that will be an hour episode, I guarantee it. But yeah. No Pokemon. And you know, as far as I do, ladies and gentlemen, we are far, too well far under level. See, we're back and we are here. Now, Mr. Magic Cart Man is over here. Or not over here. Was that only Magic Hop in the remake? Let me know. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Mount Moon. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call it a day. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time.